Hi y'all, welcome back to my shop for this moment of uh, moment of peace. Uh, I've got a bunch of green wood that's backing up on me and I haven't had a chance to process, process it because I've had some sciatica on my uh, right leg uh, from some degenerative disc problem that's been causing me a bit of a problem, but uh, I think I'm on the mend and I'm working, working through it. I guess they call that old age. Um, today I want to share with you some pictures that viewers have uh, hit, sent me their projects. I also want to share some comments and, and responses to comments that have been posted on some recent recent videos, starting off with uh, chess pieces. Um, Gideon Azar from uh, Australia has taken the time to take my chess set and make uh, CAD CAM drawings of it to scale, and and I really appreciate uh, you sharing that with uh, Gideon. I've placed those on my blog, uh, so they're accessible for anybody. So they're nice scale drawings of, of all the pieces. There's two versions. There's one for the U.S. 8.5 by 11 paper, and there's another one for the A4 paper, which is more common in, in Europe and Australia and some other, other locations. I want to show you some pictures of some seam rippers that Ron Radcliffe uh, uh, sent in. He's making these for his, his wife, and I know she's appreciative of that. She gives those to, to her friends, so here's a picture of those seam rippers. Bill Kibbe was inspired to make uh, these sewing needle uh, cases based on pillboxes after my video. Well done, uh, Bill. Those look very nice. I had several comments about the emergency switch that I placed on my uh, uh, power mag and, and me practice uh, uh, using it. It really is a great safety feature. Uh, plans for making a safety switch for that uh, Pyromatic, and you could also, I think, use the same similar plans for a Jet 1642 are available on uh, Mustard Monster. Uh, you, you can do a, and I'm gonna, I've got the li link here on the on the page to to Mustard Monster, which is tips and tricks for owners of Pyromatic uh, 3520 uh, A and, and B model lathes. Vacuum chucking, Carl Richards three. Uh, mentioned a comment, said, I really enjoyed the video. My question is one of the small Harbor Freight vacuum pumps. Will it work for this application? Uh, generally, I would say that the Harbor Freight ones really don't work very well because they're just too small. They're usually two and a half or three cubic feet per minute. You need a little bit more than, more than that. Uh, regarding turning a, a wood tool handle, uh, Mike Porter, uh, Asked where I could uh, suggest where I could uh, identify where you can get brass ferrules from. Uh, I was just at my, he said he was at his favorite hardware store, and the closest he could find was a three quarter inch copper slip coupling, but that'll tarnish unless it's coated, coated with clear varnish. Also, a slip coupling has no shoulder, but many of the tools have ferrules with no shoulder. It says they bought a blank of Chinese high speed steel on Amazon, just like I did for making his thin parting tool, and he has a nice piece of ash, so all it needs is a ferrule. Well, Craft Supply sells the larger brass ferrules. Uh, Lowe's and uh, Home Depot in the U.S. carry an 8-inch piece of fan pipe, a short extension. Take a magnet with you, make sure you're getting a brass section, and you can cut that up. But it's kind of pricey. I think it's about $9 for an 8-inch eight eight inch piece. Um, frankly, I, th I don't think there's anything wrong with using copper couplings. Uh, so what if they tarnish? It's a tool. Uh, I haven't had bad luck with them tarnishing. They, they develop a certain patina and uh, and then for smaller tools the brass uh, various brass couplings for plumbing seem to work work well. Beads of Courage, James Walt, James, uh, Walt uh, made a comment about his great series and a great cause. Our guild is supporting Beads of Courage this coming year and I'll be sending many of our turners over here to watch these three videos. Cheers, Jim, Jim Walt, Vice President of Quint Wood Turners in Ontario, Canada. I think that's a great idea. I know the Georgia clubs are committed to doing over 700 uh, of these Beads of Courage boxes uh, and bringing them to the symposium this summer in Atlanta. Turning tips, tricks, and jigs. Uh, Christopher H. made a comment. Uh, he liked the video. Uh, lots of good ideas. He's, he mentioned that one simple idea you might like, I noticed, it looked hard for you to break the small chuck loose in your first tips and tricks video. He rubs a little beeswax on the headstock spindle and that'll last a year, prevent binding. I rub paraffin on the uh, lathe bedways. I tried beeswax out on the lathe bed, lathe bed, and it lasts longer than paraffin, but it's too sticky. 
Uh, I haven't used beeswax. Uh, that's that's a thought. I'll have to give that a that a try. Uh, I've had pretty good luck with with a piece of candle wax that I have handy. Uh, Chris Martin made a comment about wood turning lathe speed safety. Uh, he says spinning anything below a thousand in the piece will above a thousand and piece goes airborne below a thousand it'll it'll fall to the earth mm, if it's a small spindle that's true but larger pieces uh, that's not necessarily true the outer because the outer uh, uh, rim of a large bowl or a platter is going much faster than something smaller so it's not only the uh, the speed but it's also the the size so I'd be cautious with that but for spindles that's generally generally true uh, David Walsher uh, uh, provided some interesting uh, insight into the origin of that of Dale Nish's documentation on that uh, sp speed calculation, and it, it's it's a it's a rough rule of thumb that you know you need to apply some guidance to. But he developed it because uh, he wanted to give something concrete and specific to shop teachers that they could apply in their their shop, and it was never intended as a hard and fast rule, just a rule of thumb that would be right in most circumstances. <laughs> Here's one from, from a viewer, Karsten Huda, I guess, that commented on my turning an Easter egg. He says, he says, sorry, but have you ever seen an egg? That one is no egg at all. And my response to uh, Karsten is, please send me an egg, picture of an egg that you've turned, and I'll be happy to show it on a future video as an inspiration to others. Uh, I guess he took that as negative and came back and says, just open up your fridge and take a look at how eggs look. The form you turn there doesn't look like an egg. To be true, the uh, form of an egg is harder to turn than a perfect sphere. Uh, okay, thanks for that comment. Uh, I, I rather like the one by Donald Fugit. He says, uh, responding to that video, he says, egg, exceptional video. Thanks once again, Mike. Making a wood turning scraper from high speed steel by Terry Ellis. Uh, he said, oh good, more tools to make. He ordered the tool, uh, the square uh, tool stock, and now he's planning on a small negative rake scraper and making a banana tool for a mini lathe. Thanks for the video, Mike. I said, Terry, uh, you're welcome, and maybe you ought to try a beading and parting tool instead of a banana, so you might look at that. Um, finish for wood turners. Uh, Carl Richards commented uh, that he's using antique oil. He was wondering if he could put a coat of CA on top of it after it cures. Uh, maybe, I've never tried that, the safest bet would be to put a sealer coat of shellac on it first. Shellac sticks to almost everything and almost everything sticks to, to shellac. Um, my shop, shop fairy turning wood video, uh, Joseph Scarborough posted a comment that uh, says, Very nice Mike, brings back memories when I started turning under the tutelage of my uncle who was my old school production turner uh, when turned furniture parts were still made by hand. Uh, 55 plus years later, I'm still at it. Occasionally, I'll get a whiff, a whiff of wood shavings that zaps me right back to his shop. And uh, yeah, it's funny how memory uh, uh, smells give such powerful uh, memory clues. He says that she'll have a, also have memory clues, which will take her back there with you. Uh, thanks for sharing yourself with her and, and y'all's interaction with us. Um, how to turn a wood box, part one of two. Um, as wood turning commented that uh, he's trying to create a work process for box type stuff. Uh, that he watched some of uh, uh, Sam Angelo's videos and noticed that he doesn't advocate threading our domestic wood, i.e., cherry, maple, etc. Um, he's not interested in taking time to make boxwood inserts or something like that. Is do I find that uh, second turn boxes made from cherry or maple would take threading? Um, I'm really interested in the process for urn tops, the most reliable and quick method I've seen but so far is using uh, ABS pipe, a type of plastic, and turning it to size for recess and a tenon. I'm not sure about using plastic in something that is for the most sacred uh, part, uh, a cremation urn. Sorry this is so long, I'm sitting here watching these videos again and taking notes. Much appreciated regards, Scott. Um, I think Sam's right that uh, maple and pear are generally too soft for hand thread chasing. I've had reasonable success with Bradford pear. Persimmon, Osage orange, and dogwood are also uh, generally good domestic candidates. For urns, the best option is probably an inlaid thread ring of a suitable exotic such as boxwood, blackwood, Burmese blackwood is much cheaper than African blackwood. Zapote works well, Catalox works well, Lignum vitae, some Bacote, and most rosewoods. Treat it as green, uh, that is when you get it with wax on it, uh, 
it may move as it's drying. A threaded insert ring of Corian is also an option. Corian is good for practicing hand thread chasing. Um, and he uh, adds wood turning suggests maybe doing a, 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 an urn from start to finish and that, that, that might be a good possibility. I'll put that on the to-do list. Um, a couple of people uh, uh, questioned about where I, I have some of these resources I mentioned in videos on my blog. If you'll go to my blog, uh, the link is on the description of almost every video, and then go to look under the tab or the page along the top that says resources, and you go to that page and scroll down, and you'll have the links to handouts, videos, and, and articles. Uh, Ron Radcliffe made the comment about my small uh, uh, ring box. He said uh, he's made several boxes like that, but even smaller. He says we can use them to hold our pills at mealtime. At a certain age, pills become a staple of life, and a small bowl helps keeping them from rolling all over the place. Uh, that's a great, great idea, Ron. My wife uses one of my small bowls to put pills in, and that's another great marketing tip when you're selling something small like that. If you, the people can see what you're what you're uh, what they can use it for they're more apt to buy it so maybe take some take a few aspirin with you and put it in a small uh, ring uh, in a small ring ring uh, bowl Louis Powell uh, commented on a ring box and he asked uh, what I thought of ingrain bowls uh, I don't like ingrain bowls it's harder to cut and then the than the side grain bowls and I don't personally I don't find them as attractive in most instances plus the bottom it tends to be a little more thin and it, and it breaks more more easily Andrew Smith uh, asked the question about uh, finishing. He says, I've done a bit of carving over the last year. I've been using beeswax, uh, boil linseed oil, and alcohol mix as a finish as most of the turnings live outside. and said no matter uh, what happens, they tend to go uh, dull and gray no matter how he applies the finish. Would the same uh, go dull if he uses a wood turning that would be kept indoors using as a friction uh, polish? And I would say probably not. It, it probably won't, won't go gray if, it leaves it, if you leave it in, indoors. Wax finishes, though, generally do not hold up real well and usually will tend to get dull and will need to be buffed up or polished from, from time to time. I got a future suggestion from someone uh, about returning a dried bowl. I did the chestnut bowl and uh, it's going to be several months before that bowl's dry, but I'll find a dry bowl blank and, and we'll do a video on, on returning a, a dried bowl. Uh, that's about all I've got. Appreciate your, your, your watching. I know a lot of times people will have comments on videos and they'll get a response when I post it. If, if they're a subscriber, uh, they'll, uh, you know, they'll get an email that I post a response. But for other people that don't read the comments or they watch the video and moved on, they don't always see the response to these questions, so I thought it might be good to touch on them. So, thanks for visiting. See you later.